Hello people, and welcome back to part 30 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much indeed for all of the kind comments, suggestions and support during our power plant build last week. And, uh, what a sense of facility we managed to create, right? This is one of my favourite power plant builds. We did also have some comments about the fact that maybe the nuclear plants need a water source nearby. Uh, for cooling, which is totally legitimate, that is absolutely true. Uh, however, a little known fact about Noob Yolk is that it has a, a immense underground river network which is being siphoned off to cool the towers, of course. However, in today's episode, we are heading over to the opposite side of the road, towards this lake that has been here for a long time, uh, to build a little rural fishing community. Now, <laughs> again, we have some comments suggesting that is maybe putting a fishing town next to a nuclear power plant the best idea. Wait a minute. One, two, three. But we should be okay, I think. <laughs> we should be okay. So we're going to do some road network stuff here today, uh, get in some placements of our fishing harbours. Also want to bring in quite a quirky, unique building into this build as well, which we'll see if we can factor in. Uh, but it's a really unique space to work with. We've got some very awkward vanilla terrain to be working with here, and we are also against the tile boundary, um, at least until we add 25 tiles into Nubio, which isn't that far away now. You know, we've pretty much filled most of the nine vanilla tiles now. Not that much more left to do until we can pop up and start exploring the map a little bit more. But otherwise, let's talk about how we can build a small, detailed little rural fishing town in the city skyline, shall we? Okay, so first of all, let's get started by drawing out some road frames so we can decide exactly where we're going to put our little fishing marinas. Of course, we have covered a fishing marina in the Noob's Guide before, a long time ago now, though, when we built this one over here. It's, uh... Yeah, pretty, a little bit more industrial over this side. A nice little sort of harbour carved out with the terraforming. I really enjoyed the episode, so go check it out if you haven't seen it. And sort of similar vibes that we're going to be generating today. So I'd like to bring out a dirt road frame. And use this to in order to place my keys. So I think I'm going to go with the simple seawall fenceless ones. I'm not going to get any sort of major infrastructure over here today. I want to keep things quite low key. And then let's go on to this one. And I want to kind of draw out this keyframe in segments of 90, if you will. And I think I just want to do a little bit of terraforming here as well, just to help bring a slightly more gentle angle to the shoreline. It's going to allow us to place our keys a little bit easier as well. That should be okay. Probably need to let the water resettle a little bit. What I would like to do here is draw the key out in lengths of 90 and coming off the angle snap as I'm going to need it. So we'll do one more here. These come off the angle snap now, and then we'll come back to just row length. And then just allow a little bit of, I guess curvature isn't the right word. You know, it just sort of slightly angles the key when you do it in sort of shorter measurements and then keep coming off the angle snap. Almost adds a little curve into it where you need it. And then we're not going to go up there because that's where the terrain starts to elevate. That'll be fine over that side. And we can possibly bring it out here again where we want the angle snap. This straight section, and that should do the job for the most part. Then we can delete that dirt road now because we know that was just a frame. So let's come into our fishing. So I oh, actually need to show what fish is in here. It's shellfish. Shellfish is for days. So let's have a look at the shellfish fishing harbour. So I think this is a pretty sort of low key one. It's nothing horrendously industrial. It is quite large actually, but I think a couple of these appropriately placed will be welcome into the build, I think. So I don't want like a massively active fishing harbour. Again, maybe only one or two harbours themselves. Maybe go for a third down this way if we wanted to. Okay, we could also use the uh, harbours or the farms, which I very rarely use. Yeah, there's the algae farm as well. And then also the seaweed farm, but this isn't the sea, so. I think we might actually come in with an algae farm instead for the third one. Just because I never use them, and I feel like we should maybe pay some respect to these assets. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's go for that. So we'll have a shellfish fish, or two shellfish harbors, and an algae farm as the configuration for this particular type of marina. So let's come in now with our roads, and we can connect these into the main frame, uh, which will be this road coming off of this one. So hopefully we can get a connection there. It's not quite ideal, is it? How about that angle? Is that any better? Like it might be. Come on to a road guideline here too. 
and connect into here and then start piecing everyone together. And this should give us a nice time for the most part, I think. Cool, so we also have a road coming out of here. And again, I want to try and stay away from sort of four and six lane roads for this area just because it's a more rural theme. So let's come in with some asymmetry and then we'll get a nice little curve on the go here. And let's just snake this around to the point it can connect into the harbour. And then we just want to make sure that our asymmetry is facing the same way. So we want the uh, two lanes facing into the main junctions. And we'll have this one come down here. And then, yeah, two lanes into there is fine. So that's the initial base concept. Let's go ahead and start mapping out uh, some ideas for road network frames now. So we're probably going to be sticking in with uh, European suburbia, I imagine, just because it's uh, old faithful, isn't it? We're all a fan of European suburbia at this point. I was wondering if I can actually possibly get away with, you know, this is irritating me. We're going to have to change this. Let's just slightly move the fishing harbour down to like there. What the hell? <laughs> no, that's not what we want to happen. Let's try that again. Let's go for fishing, uh, shellfish harbour. And then there should be good, I think. And hopefully that's an easier connection to make. Yeah, I'm more happy with that now. That's okay. So we're also going to place a unique building today, like I mentioned. Uh, but we'll come to that in a bit. For right now, I just want to sort of slope out this terrain a little bit. And we'll also prepare the terrain for the unique building, which will be revealed in the episode. Which you probably would have seen actually in the opening cinematic, so you probably know which one it is. Right, and then we're just going to have that run on an angle. And that probably will eventually head off into our 25 tower radius eventually. But for right now, it's just going to sit there on a nice little slope. We can get a connection in here, and then what we can really do now is just allow maybe three tiles of detailing. Detailing space to sit between what is the sort of rural fishing town and the harbour. So we'll leave that in there. I'm going to be happy with that, I think. Again, we can see opportunities where we might want to develop uh, some friendly little frontage networks that can sit against our current existing sort of arterial and road infrastructure. If we want to come off a road guideline for this, I'm just looking to match up that sort of outer grid perimeter with the main road. Then I might actually want to come back onto a road guideline. Just as we get some nice gentle curves in with the guideline of the main road. And again, maybe off it as we come up to this place. And then just line that up there. And that gives us some nice zoning opportunities to face out onto the main road. Or detailing opportunities as well, of course. And then let's go ahead and bring up some frames now. You know, it's all about just sort of filling out spaces with designs that you've come to know. You know, if you enjoy a frontage road network, this is going to be a really nice opportunity to have one against uh, your main road in this part of the city. Also some nice train line action over here too. And then again, those sort of ideas can be expanded. I do want to maximise some of the space here. So let's make sure that we hit those sort of back-to-back -back zoning tiles where we can. Bring some stuff down here. Let it expand and then we can pop into this little frontage road over this side and then keep backing up those back to back zoning tiles where we can get them in. Not too bad, and again, something similar that can probably be brought out up this side as well. At least as to where the terrain starts to become a little bit too unfriendly toward us, so maybe we can bring in a little gentle curve into that place as well. Okay, so just some base rural town frames. Well, this allows us now to start piecing things together. So I'll go ahead, get water over here, and then get the fishing routes hooked up as well as using their route line. And then we can start having a look at some detail and some general rural vibes for the town as well. Okay, so we set up a district, and given this European suburbia, we've also called it the Jason Churchill Lake. And of course, that's one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thanks for all your support, Jason. You're a real secret blend of the old herbs and spices, mate. Thank you for everything you do. What I'd like to start doing now is just zoning up uh, some low density res, of course. So we'll have this growing in a few places, uh, but not everywhere though, because I do want to save some sort of entrance detailing, if you like, for the town. So of course, our uh, fishing harbours, they are loud assets, so we do have to be uh, wary of the noise pollution. And I think we can come up with a happy little rural palette to occupy these spaces between the suburbia and the harbour itself. And what I'm thinking is a little stretch of uh, nature reserve fencing, of course, just on the edge of the grass. And then we'll come into our content creator trees. And then we'll start spamming a lot of wild grass. Or long grass, I guess, down, right? Well, I guess long grass and wild grass are the same thing. So we'll have that in. 
Go ahead and get some wild hedges in there as well. Okay, just in the spaces where it isn't filled with grass. It's a very tiny little nuance, but you will sort of appreciate it come the end. And then lots of these sort of mini content creator overgrowths around the edge of that initial line. Okay, lots of it, just keep spamming. Then we're going to move up a tree size, we're going to grab ourselves uh, the occasional horse chestnut, perhaps three along this stretch. And then we're going to embellish with occasional larger live oak, and then also uh, some eastern cottonwood in there too. And then don't be afraid to introduce a touch of vanilla bush in there as well for a slightly uh, happier shade of green. And then what that should give us is just a really organic looking rural overgrown green belt that can help shelter the noise pollution from the fishing harbours against the low density res over this side. I think it fits in with the theme, doesn't it? And we can now use this palette elsewhere in the city as well, you know, if we want to have similar vibes over here against our main sort of arterial system. But why don't this time we bring in a little bit of a walking pathway so it makes the space walkable for our sims? Again, why don't we just bring this off on the little stretch over here? Yeah, this is the entire episode, everyone. This is just rural detailing. <laughs> this is my favorite thing to do in the game. Just build these really cute rural towns with so many different designs and palettes that you can come up with. So take a look around your own towns, you know, if you have you know, sort of more rural spaces near you. you now have a look as to how overgrown the roadsides are. You imagine that this sort of place doesn't receive much maintenance during its sort of lifetime. Very much left for nature to reclaim the side of the road if you like. Maybe another horse chestnut in there too. And hopefully this will just give us a little sort of you know, border. You can almost like peer through the trees as you're driving past and see the fishing harbours back there. Of course the town eventually will be laid out before it as well. I think I'm going to be enjoying that for the most part I think. So let's come back into fishing. Uh, we do have of course uh, the uh, fish market, which is a loud old boy, and then also the fish factory as well, which is also pollutive. I don't really want the fish factory here. Uh, we do have one down at the other harbour that we had a look at at the start of the episode. So yeah, I definitely want the fish market in, but it's again, it's a place of or a decision as to where we can actually squeeze this thing in. And I guess, you know, the road frames are always subject to change, so why don't we sort of bend this one off here for the time being? And just seeing where we can squeeze it in. There's a very, very slight sweet spot there, isn't there? That's actually just slightly offset from the road too, weirdly enough. Okay, we only get a little bit of terrain junk there, but it's Vanilla City Skylines. I think we can bear with it for the most part. And um, if not, what we can do is actually just break the frames around it. And then just terraform that lip away from the asset. It'll make it a lot less noticeable if we just allow the road to stay flat as it passes by the fishing market. Okay, there we go. And now we know we can connect in. Without too many major issues. There we go. That sorts out those containers, doesn't it? And then it looks like those frames can establish themselves back over there now. And then we can bring these connections back in on a road guideline. Splendid. Cool. So we can now take the fish and sell it at our local market over here as well. So I did also talk about the possibilities of some little town entrance detail, which I'd like to have a look at now. And I'm thinking just a little gentle pattern of repeated rocks. Okay, you know, don't get into the habit of zoning everything just because it's a new town. You know, maybe think about an entrance, a sort of a sense of importance, if you like, you know. Maybe it has been a little bit landscaped. Go ahead and get those in again. Lots of your content creator overgrowths are always going to be welcome in spaces like this. Of course, you can go a little bit more repeated pattern with the overgrowth palettes, if you like. I think no one is averse to... A touch of repeated wild hedge, at least, anyway. Get some chestnuts in there, too. And then maybe some cottonwoods. We'll sort of make this the palette for the area. Yeah, I'm going to be enjoying that. And then I can definitely embellish this with maybe a little bit of farm fencing. That's going to sit on the opposite side of the road, just so it complements the pattern. And there's also a really nice opportunity here for walkability, isn't there? You know, where our sims can... Pass by one network to the other as the fence pattern carries on on the other side. That should just hopefully give us a little bit more of a... So, you know, you're entering the town here. You could also upgrade this road into a treed road if you like, and then, of course, change the tree on it, but I'm not really going for that sort of landscape feel today. 
But I'm happy with these little pallets that are now starting to develop uh, within the town itself. You also close off this road here as well if you want and create another little frontage system here. A little bit of road against road action. So is a old favourite, isn't it? So of course now the fish market is producing noise pollution, so and we don't want any residential sort of immediately next to it. What we can do is come back in with perhaps a little bit of that noob sky and forest, or if not a little bit of uh, the pine brush that we're using in this part of the town and give a very, very thick sound shelter uh, on the back of the fish market. Something to that extent, okay? And it helps fit in with the raw theme as well. You know, these sort of like corrugated iron roofs with the thick pine forest behind is certainly a vibe to be respected, isn't it? It is, and there we go. You know, there's a couple of assets placed already. A little bit of tasteful commercial or residential as and where needed. Goes a long way. Go ahead and create some more walkability spots now around the town. Uh, we do also have one over here uh, for which I'm going to uh, just temporarily connect it until I know. Actually, I guess the road is actually going to make sense to come up this way, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. We'll do that instead. Do We'll do some sort of hillside highway suburbia designs over here once we get to developing the stadium district. But that's for a few episodes time at least. Alright, cool. So, you're not jumping through with power yet. Well, you will eventually. And how are our, our fishing boats doing? Let's see what their route efficiency is like. Looks like it might just hit 100% actually as he comes back in. So you can actually pass the fishing routes outside of the tile boundaries if you didn't know. He's going to come back in with a 78% load. We could possibly do with making that longer, but it's not a massive sort of issue for right now. So we'll leave it as it is. Okay, cool. So let's have a look, look at some commercial. So I'm thinking green cities would probably pair best with this kind of vibe. So let's go ahead and give the area an organic and local produce specialization. Again, if you are missing green cities, then you can find it at the instant gaming link down below. It does help support the channel. And uh, you get super cheap codes. It's like ridiculously cheap. Go have a look at the link. Okay, yeah. So let's start zoning up some green city spices to sit opposite the fish market. And we can probably go some more green cities here as well. And then what I would like to do again is just let some more organic looking green belts develop between the harbours and the roads. Don't want to zone everything. This is exactly the sort of vibe I'm after though. Definitely these organic stalls. That's mega. I think a little bit of soy and lentils is also appreciated, isn't it? Especially amongst our vegetarian friends. And we're going to get another little organic stores in there. I'm happy with that. You could definitely get away with mass repeating those organic store patterns. That would be welcome. I actually think we're going to do that with that in mind now. Yeah, well, let's trim off that and we'll go for those uh, two deep spaces. Hopefully we'll get another one. Okay. Over here again as well. Yeah, I'm happy for some more concrete buildings to be over this side. And that uh, soy and lentils is back again. Vegetarians can rejoice. Then we'll start bringing in some of that commercial over this way now. Help start creating that sense of town over facing sort of the main arterial frames that pass into this side of the Jason Churchill village. Otherwise it's developing isn't it? It's certainly starting to pick up its own sort of vibe and feel. Enjoyed seeing the train pass by then. Quite easily distracted by public transport everyone. Thankfully that's not a problem I suffer with in real life is gawping at trains as they go past. I imagine that comes quite dangerous, especially if you're driving. But that's nice. I enjoy that. Cool. Okay, so we'll just let some more zonings develop. And we will definitely prepare them all to come in alongside providing them uh, with some park facilities, of course, because they're going to want uh, reasons to live over here. So why don't we have a dog park somewhere? Uh, maybe on that point would have been nice. We'll go for that one. That'll be nice place for a park and then maybe we can also get a small park in somewhere around here maybe we go for a plaza not really a plaza we don't think and then maybe we'll have a small playground on this corner where we've got a little bit more shattered zoning and that should be okay and boost the land value around here for everyone too let's also bring in some general service assets for our town definitely a med clinic somewhere be nice to have this sort of in and around the main square, if you like. I think I can get away with it there, can't I? Cool. Of course, it's going to help boost land value, make people move in a little bit quicker. 
Otherwise, I'm happy with this. We'll just carry on letting it grow while we come up uh, to this top section now and have a look at the unique building that I want to use. So we're going to need to do a little bit of terraforming here because this is a very unique, unique building. And we're going to come into our uniques and we are going to grab the Aviation Club. Um, which is a little bit of a bold move, but please uh, do just bear with me. So we're just going to knock a little bit of this infrastructure back over this side. There we go, just get a shot. So I actually want to do a little bit of harsher terraforming here because I want to expose the runway almost as though it's on its own little sort of pier or peninsula. Like it sort of comes off onto its own little landmass. So I definitely want to respect that vibe here. Okay, so keep cutting away a little bit of it. Something like that. I think this is going to fit in really nicely. Sort of like a little mini airstrip here. It fits in really nicely on top of the hill alongside all the fishing harbours, I think. I think I'm on board with that, right? Then, of course, once it's got its forest around it and it sort of borders onto the next build next door, it should have a little bit more sense of purpose. You can see one of our planes leaving now. There we go. Do I have the first person camera mod on? Can I get a ride with him? Can, although we are in the propeller. <laughs> it is a little bit dangerous. Hopefully he turns around and we can get a view of the city. We're just going to fly away into the emptiness of Diamond Coast, isn't he, of course? There we go. Cool. And now we can see New Yoke through the propeller. Big, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't seen it from this perspective before, actually. Sort of heading down. Of course, there's still so much more to expand once we hit 25 tiles as well. A little bit of appreciation for New York, everyone. Been really enjoying playing this map. So we have that in. That's going to be grand. We'll definitely have this up here. Uh, and then, yeah, just like I mentioned, we'll let this road sort of come in. And I think what we will do is then switch to a high-speed uh, two-way highway. And then I think with a little bit of uh, dancing and spinning and finagling, we can plan in a connection to eventually head off as a sort of high-speed access road out of the town, out of this part of New York. But it's going to fit in there, I think. Definitely wants that boreal forest bringing back around it, I think, to an extent, of course. Respecting the fact that the planes actually do need to take off here. So giving it a little bit of a perimeter, I think, will also help the uh, build fit in a little bit more. Something like this. Okay, and then what we can do with these exposed uh, rock surfaces, if indeed you don't want to soften them out, so they're not as severe, is do what we did in the power plant build. Where you're sort of building in these false... Uh, vanilla rock retaining walls as it sort of moves up a layer. That's definitely something you can bring into this as well. But, you know, once it has its forest around it, I think it's appropriate, isn't it? I'm very much happy with that, and it's going to remain a part of the build today, I think. So if we're just waiting for these guys to go, of course, they're going to want services as well. So let's go ahead and plan those in. Maybe you can have one right here. That's going to be fine. And then we'll also get a police station in too. We'll probably go for the European one. It'd be most appropriate, isn't it? And we'll get this over the side, too. We're also getting not enough buyers for fish. Interestingly enough. Means that we're stockpiling a lot of it. And, of course, this needs a very temporary power connection as well. Let's just go ahead and zone up a little bit of green cities. Uh, commercial to the opposite that side just to get the power through. And keep our residentials coming in also. And, yep, having it all backing onto that main road is going to be nice. Then we can do some roundabout decoration in here during our DSA and time lapse too. Otherwise, it's just a case of getting everyone zoned in. And again, keeping those walkability spots coming through as well. Let's also bring this one in as well. And there we go. Let's keep identifying spaces for walkability. You will really notice a difference in the traffic. But you know, the prime example of this is, I feel like I talk about pathways all the time, but you'll see the difference it makes once it's sort of registered in an established city over by our uh, mega new Buick walkability spot, right? You know, if all these pathways weren't here, most of these people would be driving. So the difference just, what is there here? Maybe like one, two, three, four, like four connections of a path around your public transport networks. See the effect that this has, right? Just the AI will love to walk if you let them. So do consider it in with your builds. You will certainly notice a difference in the traffic on the end. Look at that run down the main road now as well. I haven't really noticed that before either. So I'm getting very distracted with Nubio today. Yeah, just this big rundown now from the system where it splits into the one-way networks. Trams flowing through it. Very nice. <laughs> very nice indeed. Then it comes up. And of course back into the more rural part of the map now. 
What I'd also like to do over this side of town is see if we can develop maybe a little bit of a switchback system. Just a little tiny one. Allows us to make a little bit more use out of this cliff face that's developed. So I think what we will do is come back into our small roads. And then just align these two together. So they connect in. And then we'll grab our slope terrain tool. We're going to right click this top height. And then from the bottom of the road I just want to start chiseling away a little landmass here. Something like that. Let's also prepare our road for it to land here. And then a little bit of soften around that. And then we'll bring it out of this one. So really tight curves. Only really snap into the angle here. Let's just start going really tight. There we can. And then we'll see if we can get a nice little connection in there. I think that's going to be happy. Could upset some of the gradient police, but I think it's a risk worth taking. Mars just had a little bit more interest into that cliffside, doesn't it? I think we're okay with it. Of course, lots of rot detail to be had around there as well. Perhaps some overgrowth pallets too. Also allows us to extend a little bit more of our commercial frontage on this side. Where we can have some more green cities things. Yes, these guys are threatening to abandon. So we'll just carry on. Zone up these spaces. It's weird that these guys aren't growing. I'm guessing it's just because of a service and part need, but there should be enough demand within the bars to fill this. Yeah, these, these ones are growing, I guess. Oh, coming over time. Yes, there we go. Now it's coming in. That was really weird. Yeah, it's starting to go up now anyway. However, guys, that does feel like a good point for a detailing time lapse. Uh, not too much work to do here today. Quite a short episode, but an effective and appropriate build, I think. So what we are going to do is bring in our overgrowth pallets around the rest of the road network. And also expand our very thick pine forest pallet that's around. That just helps kind of accentuate that more rural vibe when you face lots of dense forest near the build. Identify more spots of walkability, decorate our roundabout. Then also tie off this high street with maybe a touch more appropriate commercial zoning. Things where we have repeated assets here. Looks like this one's waiting to level up though. That one's been made historical so hopefully that'll change. Again similar with this one. Yes, These need to be different assets as well. And then lots more sort of rock and overgrowth detailing, especially up and around the little switchback road. Uh, more rock decals in here. And then just to try and help tie in the new additions into the area. I'm a huge fan of this little runway. I mean, it's really short, right, compared to the airport ones. Like the airport DLC stuff, but, you know, I guess these are airliners, right? These are only tiny little propeller planes. I guess they don't need nearly as much room to take off, but I'm happy with it. It's a little bit quirky, but it's something different. I think it fits in. Quite nicely with the town over here, doesn't it? Especially with the power plant in the background there too. Alright. Wonderful. So, let's detail the Jason Church or Lake Town. And then we'll be right back.
So let's have a detailing review, shall we? So, in and around the shoreline, we brought in lots of repeated wild hedge patterns, which always works out quite nicely. One side, some tasteful green tree, and then some taller overgrowth palettes around the, I guess what you call a town centre, and really enjoyed the way this has developed. A little bit of tasteful green cities here and there, and exposing the actual fish market itself to kind of like what you would call the high street, I guess. It uh, worked out really nicely, alongside the green city stuff over here, which a little car park came in as well, which is always nice. But yeah, if this turned out really nicely, really happy with this kind of little mini green cities rural fishing town centre, if you like, a bit of a combination. And then we've used a new uh, forest palette here alongside the arterial road, which is all the content creator stuff, uh, of course, with some tasteful nature reserve fencing as well. Also brought in a little bit of walkability over the roundabout with a little tea path system that connects people back into the train station. So that's just going to help take people uh, off of the roundabout, even though they are still using it, of course, because they'll go over to this side. But it just takes a little bit of pressure off of it with people choosing to use the path instead of the crosswalks. And then a little bit of shattered uh, low density residential zoning, just so it kind of looks like it's you know, not all back to back here, side to side rather. And then it's just going to sit out here and eventually flow into something of a stadium complex, which of course will come in a future build, which will sit against the little boreal pine forest here with the road that hugs the edge of it and we can see the planes coming and going. I did bring in those repeated rock patterns again just around the edge of the runway as it comes off the pier. And then some uh, walking pathways with some fencing also to mark a little bit of a extra landing and strip off the back of the runway. And uh, it's a really cool way of using the uh, aviation club. Not really kind of drawing too much attention to it and just allowing it to sit there on the hill with the sort of fishing marinas in the front. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Really cute. Also thrown in a uh, fire watch tower here too alongside some nature reserve fencing and more overgrowth. Kind of the, the key theme here is, you know, as we've been building over here in the last few episodes, we wanted to maintain kind of that rural vibe and especially the sense of scale and distance and all this forest and super heavy overgrown areas all around is really adding to that, isn't it? And as we kind of look at this from afar now, we can consider this one of the first of many builds around the edge of this larger lake that we've got in New York. Uh, there's even rail lines over here as well, although... Well, see, <laughs> the gradient police need to go after 2015 gloss load of map makers. Look at this. Awful. <laughs> this is a closed slopes. Yeah, so eventually we'll get over here right and we can fix all this and do something fun with the rail line on the lake. So, uh, yeah, really happy with how the vibe is turning out. Uh, furthermore, into that vibe with the rural theme, we have lots more rock detailing now, piecing together all these decals along the shore, uh, with a little bit of terraforming just to help make those steeper sort of lake shorelines a little bit more attractive instead of this, right? You know, this is how it comes in vanilla. It's lo it just looks terrible. And then, you know, maybe we can spruce it up and add little edges and cliffs onto it and just make it a bit nicer. And then we have a little mountain road tunnel. So, yeah, the road through here that sort of had a few chicanes in it as it came up the hill. I just thought we could maybe get better use out of a industrial road tunnel, having the little sort of extractor fans on the front of the tunnel there. Uh, really happy with it. It turned out super cutely and sort of pops out the other side of the hill here. And again, as we expand around the lake in this part of New York, uh, we can take this mountain road off and up into other parts of the map, which will be fun. However, guys, that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below help bring more people to my channel. Thank you as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Really happy with this cute town centre, it's nice to be playing with some rural vibes again in New York. Uh, really cool inclusion of a unique building in here as well in terms of the aviation club and slightly different way of using it. Every time we've placed it, I think it's always been near kind of an airport, um, apart from the ones in Palavan, which we put very high up on the mountain. Uh, but yeah, it's turned out really nicely, super happy with the fishing harbours have kind of slotted into the build really cutely along the waterfront. And that fenceless seawall key really makes a difference to that landscape too. European suburbia always works really well as part of a European build. And it's nice to continually flesh out these spaces that are in New York. Uh, really enjoying still piecing this city together. I hope you've managed to pick up some inspiration or tips from today's episode as to how you can start to move away from kind of your denser, more metropolitan areas in the Noobs Guide. Please do hang around for some cinematics, but otherwise I will shut up and I will leave it there. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.